and today I'm going to read My Father's Dragon by Ruth Stiles Gannett. This is the first book of three about these dragons. My Father's Dragon, and then you get Elmer and the Dragon, and the Dragons of Blue Land. So if you like these stories, you got a whole bunch of them, three of them that can be read aloud. This one is a great story for children. It's going to be a little bit too hard for new readers to read to themselves, but it's a great little story. Um, I will do my best. The first couple of chapters do have a couple of pictures, and um, I will show them to you, but it takes a little while to get into the story. So I hope that even if you are not really excited about this book after I finish, that you might give it a try at the library and read some more because the ending gets to be pretty fun. My Father's Dragon. Chapter One, My Father Meets the Cat. One cold, rainy day, when my father was a little boy, he met an old alley cat on his street. The cat was very drippy and uncomfortable, so my father said, would you like to come home with me? This surprised the cat. She had never before met anyone who cared about old alley cats, but she said, I'd be very much obliged if I could sit by a warm furnace and perhaps have a saucer of milk. We have a very nice furnace to sit by, said my father, and I'm sure my mother has an extra saucer of milk. My father and the cat became good friends, but my father's mother was very upset about the cat. She hated cats, particu particularly ugly old alley cats. Elmer Elevator, she said to my father. If you think I'm going to give that cat a saucer of milk, you are very wrong. Once you start feeding stray alley cats, you might as well expect to feed every stray alley cat in town, and I am not going to do it. This made my father very sad and he apologized to the cat because his mother had been so rude. He told the cat to stay anyway and that somehow he would bring her a saucer of milk each day. My father fed the cat for three weeks, but one day his mother found the cat's saucer in the cellar and she was extremely angry. I'll show you this picture. She whipped my father and threw the cat out the door. But later on, my father sneaked out and found the cat. Together, they went for a walk in the park and tried to think of nice things to talk about. My father said, when I grow up, I'm going to have an airplane. Wouldn't it be wonderful to fly just anywhere you might think of? Would you like to fly very, very much? Asked the cat. I certainly would. I'd do anything if I could fly. Well, said the cat, if you really like to fly that much, I think I know of a sort of a way you might get to fly when you're still a little boy. You mean, you know where I could get an airplane? No, not exactly an airplane, something even better. As you can see, I am an old cat now, but in my younger days, I was quite a traveler. My traveling days are over, but last spring, I took just one more trip and sailed to the island of Tangerina. And I stopped at the port of Cranberry. Well, it just so happened that I missed that boat. And while waiting for the next one, I thought I'd look around a little bit. I was particularly interested in a place called Wild Island, which we had passed on our way to Tangerina. 
Wild Island, and Tangerina are joined together by a long string of rocks. But people never go to Wild Island because it's mostly jungle and it's inhabited by very wild animals. So I decided to go across the rocks and explore it for myself. It certainly is an interesting place. And I saw something there that made me want to weep. There is the, the boy's father and the cat having a little talk while they're walking through the park. Chapter two, my father runs away. There is a picture of a map. At the end of, of this chapter, I will show you the picture again. And we'll talk about some of the things we see. My father runs away. Wild Island is practically cut in two by a very wide and muddy river, continued the cat. This river begins near one end of the island and it flows into the ocean at the other end. Now the animals there are very lazy and they used to hate having to go all the way around the beginning of this river to get to the other side of the island. It made visiting inconvenient and mail delivery was slow, particularly during the Christmas rush. Crocodiles could have carried passengers and mail across the river, but crocodiles are very moody and not the least bit dependable and are always looking for something to eat. They don't care if the animals have to walk around the island. So that's just what the animals did for many years. But what does all this have to do with airplanes? My father asked, who thought the cat was taking an awful long time to explain about the airplanes. Be patient, Elmer, said the cat. And she went on with the story. One day, about four months before I arrived on Wild Island, a baby dragon fell from a low flying cloud onto the bank of the river. He was too young to fly very well. And besides, he, would, he had bruised one wing quite badly, so he couldn't get back to his cloud. The animals found him soon afterwards and everybody said, why, this is just exactly what we've needed all these years. They tied a big rope around his neck and waited for his wing to get well. This was going to end all their crossing the river troubles. I've never seen a dragon, said my father. Did you see it? How big is he? Oh yes, indeed, I saw the dragon. In fact, we became great friends, said the cat. I used to hide in the bushes and talk to him when nobody was around. He's not a very big dragon, about the size of a large black bear, although I imagine he's grown quite a bit since I left. He's got a long tail and yellow and blue stripes. His horns and eyes and the bottom of his feet are bright red and he has gold colored wings. Oh, how wonderful, said my father. What did the animals do with him when, they got, when his wing got well? They started training him to carry passengers. Even though he was just a baby dragon, they worked him all day and all night too sometimes. They make him carry heavy loads that are much too big. And if he complains, they twist his wings and hit him. He's always tied to a stake on a rope just long enough to, cross to go across the river. His only friends are the crocodiles who say hello to him once a week if they don't forget. Really, he's the most miserable animal I've come across. When I left, I promised I'd try to help him someday, although I couldn't see how. The rope around his neck is about the biggest, toughest rope you can imagine. And with so many night knots, it would take days and days to untie them all. Anyway, when you were talking about the airplanes, you gave me a good idea. Now, I'm quite sure that if you were able to rescue the dragon, which wouldn't be the least bit easy, he'd let you ride him almost anywhere, provided you were nice to him, of course. How about giving it a try? 
Oh, I'd love to, said my father. And he was so angry at his mother for being rude to the cat that he didn't feel the least bit sad about running away from home for a little while. That very afternoon, my father and the cat went down to the docks to see about the ships going to the island of Tangerina. They found out that a ship would be sailing next week. So right away, they started planning for the rescue of the dragon. The cat was a great help in suggesting things for my father to take with him. And she told him everything she knew about Wild Island. Of course, she was too old to go along. Everything had to be kept very secret. So when they found or bought anything to take on the trip, they hid it behind a rock in the park. The night before my father sailed, he, bothered, he borrowed his father's backpack and he and the cat packed everything very carefully. He took chewing gum, two dozen pink lollipops, a package of rubber bands, black rubber boots, a compass, a toothbrush and a tube of toothpaste, six magnifying glasses, a very sharp pocket knife, a comb and a hairbrush, seven hair ribbons of different colors, an empty grain bag with a label saying cranberry, and some, some clean clothes, and enough food to last my father while he was on the ship. He couldn't live on mice, so he took 25 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and six apples, because that's all the apples he could find in the pantry. When everything was packed, my father and the cat went down to the docks to the ship. A night watchman was on duty, so while the cat made loud, funny noises to distract his attention, my father ran over the gangplank and climbed onto the ship. He went down into the bottom and hid among some big bags of wheat. The, wait, the ship sailed early the next morning. There's a picture of the cat waiting at the dock, watching for the boat. And I will show you the picture to the next chapter, although I can't read it because I can only read this one. There are the shipmates noticing the big bags of wheat. And I'm gonna give you a clue. I think he's hiding in one. And I told you that I would show you a picture of, the, of a map of the island. So there, this is kind of hard to, whoops, it's over here. This is hard to understand what they were talking about. But right here is the river. And the river starts way here and it flows down to the ocean. So the, peop the animals who lived here didn't want to go up and around and down. And the animals that lived here didn't want to go up and around the river and down. So they got the baby, um, there he is. They caught the baby dragon and he put him up here. And so he can just fly over the river and then fly back. And that's what they're talking about. This is one of my favorite books. And when my children were little, we liked to read this book all the time. So I hope you will give it a try and I hope you like it very much. Thank you for coming again today to Story Starters. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye friends.